Imagine being told that your cancer is totally blind to your immune system, like a molecular shield, and there's nothing else that can be done. And this is not true. Your tumor may be blocked by a fortress that can't be seen. And you may have things in your markers that tell standard of care or one size fits all double blind placebo clinical trial oncology that there are no options for your immune system. But I'm gonna introduce you to precision oncology and how we can turn that immune system on. The first and last defense to winning at cancer is your immune system, and you need it to work? What are the tools to make that happen? Sometimes people hear the grim reality from their oncologist. They have microsatellite stability and there's nothing that can be done. They're not a candidate for a PD-1 inhibitor. And unfortunately, the general public and standard of care oncology thinks, well, if you're not a PD-1 inhibitor candidate, well, then you can't do immunotherapy. But that isn't the only immunotherapy. And the information they're going on is not comprehensive. When a patient has these microsatellite stability problems, they're classified as immune non-responsive, meaning they're cold. So in this episode, we're going to debunk this. There's way more than PD-1 inhibitors when it comes to cancer treatment. And we're going to break these statistics and we're going to talk about real powerful responses with cancer. I'm Dr. Dino Prado. For the last 25 years, my team and I have helped cancer patients that have failed some of the top cancer hospitals in the country. And we've helped them respond with precision care. This is deep testing, looking at thousands of markers, rebuilding immune responses, not just using the one size fits all care. Now, if we look at the big pharma model of PD-1 inhibitors, which are huge, they have big markets, they can help. But as we know from Frontiers in Oncology, maybe 19% of the patients respond long-term to these immunotherapies, and maybe it gives 10 months of life. But I believe I'm speaking from everybody when I say we want a lot more than this, and we should be looking at the immune system in a much deeper way than looking for this one marker. We should be doing an N of one precision targeting, where we break down thousands of markers, next generation sequencing, DNA, RNA transcriptomics, combining that with immune spatial biology and profiling, so we can get a 3D view of the tumor, like basically a drone in the sky that's showing us what's blocking your, your tumor from your immune system and how to turn that back on and to make it brilliant and bright so the immune system can see it. That's the real work of precision oncology. And that involves a unique ecosystem to unleash the power of your immune system. Today, I'm going to reveal with you an important strategy I like to call chemoimmunoprecision injection and a direct target to the tumor that can turn a tumor hot by releasing its antigens and releasing the information that the immune system now can use to fight the cancer. For decades, the simple question has been, does your tumor have a working DNA spell check? I'm going to do my best to explain this in a way you can understand it. If your tumor is microsatellite instable, called MSI, the spell check is broken. It creates thousands of neoantigens, these markers. Think of them as surface markers on your tumor, almost like a snake sheds its skin. It's releasing these tiny particles, and your immune system can see this. And when we have this marker, data tells us that a PD-1 inhibitor may work for this patient. This problem, though, is that this is all the doctors are looking at. They're saying, gee, do you have MSI? And then, well, here's a PD-1 inhibitor. And I'm going to say, even if you're a candidate for a PD-1 inhibitor, it's only working on 19% of the patients long term. Look at frontiers in oncology. That means four out of five only are going to get nine or 10 months of life, and then it stops working because it is not complete as a form of immunotherapy in my clinical experience. It's one single marker. So when we get a deeper look at the immune system using spatial biology and getting a 3D view over the tumor, now we can spot what we need to do to stimulate the dendritic cells and the natural killer cells. So let me explain this. When patients have microsatellite stability, MSS, it's limited because you can't use a checkpoint inhibitor, but that's only because that's the only testing they've done. When we do spatial biology, we can look in the tumor. We can see the neighborhoods of cells in and around the tumor. What's blocking the neighborhood of the tumor so your immune system can't get in? And then we can give all the right information to the dendritic cells. Think of them as detectives smug shots, pictures, fingerprints, all the data. And then the natural killer cells can come in like snipers and take out the cancer. And now we've taken a cold tumor and made it hot. That is called fracking the tumor as the analogy I like to use. Why do I call it fracking the tumors? Because we go in with a catheter the size of a hair. It goes in through the blood vessel into the tumor. And when we're in there, we deliver the targeted immunotherapy that was based on the deep learning and planning. And now we've changed the tumor's behavior. Now we squeeze the 
the tumor like an orange and those neoantigens release. And now we can turn the immune system on. So let's just be clear. Here's the big challenge. In standard oncology, three letters often determine your eligibility for immunotherapy, MSS or MSI. And that's what people think. But that's very shallow thinking when we have thousands of data points and we're not just looking at one marker. So this causes a lot of fear and anxiety in patients and limitations for doctors. But when we look at these tumors, even with spatial biology, and we're just looking at PD-1, you can see at what percentage the PD-1 is there. Sometimes it's only 10%. So what can you expect the drug to do? Only help with 10% of the tumor, or maybe it's higher saturated. That That's the detail that we get when we're working in N of 1 precision oncology with multi-omics deep testing. These types of tumors that have this micro satellite stability, 95% we see with colon cancer, that's metastatic. So people with colon cancer, this is huge. Pancreatic, this is huge. Gastrointestinal, endometrial, and many other cancers, this is a big deal because you'll be denied some form of immunotherapy. We've been using PD-1 inhibitors on and off label for over a decade. They have huge limitations. They work and then they stop working. The immune system gets exhausted and then it starts to evade again. What we need is this virtuous cycle I keep talking about. We stimulate the immune system to release the antigens, the damps, damage associated molecular patterns, the peptides, and the dendritic cells like the great detectives pick up the information, pass it on to the natural killer cells. And we have this virtuous cycle of the immune system killing the cancer, gaining more information, killing the cancer, gaining more information, keeping up with the mutations until it shuts the cancer down. This is the elegance of cancer cell immunotherapy that's customized for each patient. So when you talk to your oncologist and they say, well, you're not a candidate for immunotherapy, or we tried the PD-1 inhibitor, it's not working anymore. They're looking at a very tiny piece of the puzzle. It's not the whole diagnosis. It's not the whole picture because they're not looking at thousands of markers. They're not custom building on off-label repurposed and immunotherapy cellular vaccines. That's just not what standard of care oncology does. That's the work of precision and of one care. So when we map everything out, we get a better idea of what's going on with that tumor. For example, you could have things around the tumor that are blocking it, like FOXP3, T regulatory cells, MDSCs, myelo-derived suppressor cells that are blocking your natural killer cells from getting to the tumor. So how do we fix that? By slowly killing the cancer, directly delivering the immunotherapy into the tumor so it can't evade it, and then releasing it and giving the information to the natural killer cells. We can also build entire cancer cell vaccines by taking that same information now, the new neoantigens, the peptides, the damage-associated molecular patterns, and expand the cells into the billions and return them into the body, even directly into the tumors. Now, the cancer can't hide because it's visible, and the immune system knows what to do, and it passes the information along to the rest of your entire body because that's how God designed our body to heal from cancer. It's through the immune system. The immune system is the first and last offense. So this is the power of targeted care. This is what's missing for so many patients. The reason I'm so passionate is I hear it over and over again in responses where patients say, geez, I was told there was no immunotherapy. But when you introduce this concept of fracking that I just brought up, it changes the whole game. Now I use that because it's easy to remember. It's like fracking a tumor. You go in, direct to the tumor, kill it, bust up the neoantigens and give the information to the rest of the body. That changes it. And that's through interventional radiology oncology, image guided, direct to tumor, custom built immunotherapy for each patient's spatial biology markers and transcriptomics RNA and DNA next generation sequencing. It's highly customized. That's why you get, in my clinical experience, a far better response. We're playing 4D chess, not 2D checker, right? That's a big difference. So these oncology standard of care idea that, well, you can either use a PD-1 inhibitor or you're not a candidate and now you have no immunotherapy, what does this mean to these patients? We're going to put you on a drug that slows down the mutation and buys a few more months, costing lots of money and not really achieving the goal we want. Because what are you doing with that time? You should be getting the immune system involved, getting those new neoantigens, getting the fingerprint of the cancer, getting your immune cells activated and doing that in a custom way for your body. This is why I always believe in N of one treatment where the treatment is built around you, not on just giving you a pharmaceutical pharmaceutical drug that is designed for the masses for population health or double blind placebo clinical trial that was used on the masses, but a custom build that's for the individual patient. That changes everything. That's the genius of our body. If we can give it what it needs at the right doses, it always has a better chance to respond. And I believe that very strongly in over two and a half decades of working, that's where I see cancer coming to an end. The more we work in this kind of detail, for sure, giving people better life, quality of life response rates, but the ultimate goal is long long-term remission. And this is the power of precision oncology and immunotherapy that's custom built for each patient. We 
don't have to be victims of microsatellite stability or a certain crass or BRAF or whatever mutation you want to talk about. We can go into deeper information and aggressively build a plan that's directly for that patient, for their tumor, for their specific data, track it, stay on top of it, and treat it to get the response that we want. I hope this was helpful and you started seeing this concept, fracking the tumor, opening up those antigens, passing that information along so our body knows what to do. May the Lord bless you on your journey to healing.